put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. But hey, if the video is just too long for you to watch, chances are I recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. It's not an inferior video, it's merely a Cliff's Notes version of this very video. Amnesia, The Dark Descent video game review. You awake in a Prussian castle in a state of virtual abandonment. It's there, there are tons of cobwebs and yet some of the torches are still lit and as the title alludes to you don't remember anything. Except for just two things. Your name is Daniel. You live in London at Mayfair. And that's it. And early in the game, as you shamble from one area to another, you find a note written to yourself by yourself before your memory disappeared and it's it's low on detail but it is explicit in intent your former self implores you to kill the politically powerful baron of the castle Alexander of Brennenberg. And there we have the setup. Over the course of the game, you will piece together what happened before Daniel lost his memory. Why his, his former self wants death, wish, wishes death upon Alexander. And you yourself will get to think about, whether, philosophize over whether it is justified or not as the game delves into the former self of Daniel and the character of Alexander. And I suppose really I should help clarify who, who is this game going to be for because there is definitely not everyone will like this game. It is survival horror adventure but it's point and click adventure a genre that Frictional Games seems quite fond of. It was, it, this is very much Penumbra 2.0, you know, the, the three Penumbra games, or the two Penumbra games and the weird expansion pack, also done by Frictional Games, and this is using the same engine and they've just, yeah, they've, they've made numerous improvements. I, I would say in most ways this tops Penumbra, although certainly Penumbra is still very well worth your time. And basically this is very slowly paced. The conflicts are few and far between and you can't take out any enemies. You have to hide or flee. And if this does not appeal to you, th yeah, this, this game is simply not for you. Furthermore, it's very much 
the, the game has near unity of setting. You're almost exclusively in the castle Brennenburg, making it feel very claustrophobic and isolated. You can't even really look outside. Most of the windows, in fact, are snowed, you know, it's just covered in snow. When on occasion you can actually peer through, all you'll see is just vast whiteness and very close to the window, just outside, is just a snowfall. And it's, it's not a violent snowstorm, but yet it is, it is one of the more hostile t t types of nature, of, of weather. And yeah, it, it feels like there is that there might be something out there, but you can't access it. You are lost. The, there is a monolithic quality to the Castle Brandenburg. You don't feel like... You, it's, it's very effective that the game literally starts with you waking up inside the castle. You, you can't even... You, you're not even, like, just in front of a door which is now locked or blocked off or something. No, there's just... It, it feels like there is no... It, it feels eternal. You, you were always here. You've, you've now lost your memory, but you were always here. And, and right off the bat, I mean, one of the two things we know about Daniel is that he's, he's from London. What's he doing in a Prussian castle with his memory wiped out? It's, it's a very effective mystery setup. And I, I mentioned claustrophobia at points, you know, I, I mean that in the broader sense, that, that the castle, you, like I said, you can't see outside, basically. There are these few great places where there's just this little shiver of light passing through from above. Like, part of the, like, like I said, the castle is abandoned. Part of it is, like, it's not in a good state. The, the foundation will literally shake, leading to a very sincere fear that the whole enormous old building will collapse and bury you alive. By the way, I should mention, the game is set in 1839. But yeah, there, there are a couple of places where literally part of the ceiling will have collapsed and you can see a shimmer of light. And as we all well know, if, if you look directly at a source of light, you can't actually see something through that, that you know, hole in the ceiling. You can just see the light coming through. So there is this hint that there is a world out there but you can't access it. You are, you are trapped in here, and there is very clearly something terrifying going on, which you will determine over the course of the game. I refuse to give it away in this video. In, in a, th th this is spoiler free. Don't worry. The something that you early will notice, and which right off the bat, has, has this effective unnerving effect, is that there is definitely something supernatural going on in this castle. There are these... Suddenly, a, a gust of wind will blow open a door. And I hear you saying, well, that's entirely natural, but no. The gusts of wind are coming from inside the castle. There is literally no... It, it defies reason. And what makes this all the more effective is that the game is very clearly set in the real world. This is not a... A lot of adventures, of adventure games, will set up a, a different world. Off, off the top of my head, the, the Monkey Island series has this very cartoonish reality where no matter how 
large an item you pick up. The, the, the hero guy brush three boot will just, you know, pull out the side of his pants, just, just slide it down there, and it just disappears into just. It it very much sets up that this is not entirely the real world, and you now have to abide by the rules of this world to solve puzzles and the like. And in this game, the, the laws of physics, the, the laws of reality, are very much in an effect. And that makes these breaches of these laws all the more effective. The, it's, it's a very clear, you feel like you are basically in the real world and then something happens or you see something which you really feel this, this shouldn't be happening, this, this can't be in, in this, you know, in, in the real world. We have a very there, there, there are a few different types of horror in play here. The, the developers state that the part of the inspiration is the phenomenal psychological horror film from 1963, The Haunting, which, if you have not watched, I implore you to do so. And yes, if you love that movie, you can definitely tell that this game was was inspired. L like I said, it's the real world, and yet these things are happening, which don't seem to go to to follow the. It's it's not. You're you're not seeing a ghost. You're not seeing something that's very clearly, obviously. It's just there are these hints. There's something wrong here. There's something supernatural here. And it, it makes you question whether, did, did I just see what I thought I saw? You know, is, is there something, yeah. Now, the, we also have a very classic gothic horror style or approach to some of it, in part with the, the we, we, we definitely have a unity of perspective. This game, never breaks the first-person perspective. Everything that you see in this game is from Daniel's perspective. And I don't just mean that it, you know, the camera will pull back and we see it, you know, we see his take, no, you, you see everything through his eyes. The game literally starts with you waking up and you're not seeing your own body, you're just seeing, your, you know, the, the, the screen will literally fade in and there's, there, there, effective blur effects. I, I don't want to give too much away about the, the excellent use of effects, but just this waking up sequence will have... That's, that's kind of where they throw everything at you, so what I'm about to describe is not how the whole game is, but it, will, it has these switching Dutch angles where it goes from... You know, tilt the camera for, for, to the left and then back to the normal and then back to the right. And it's, it's very evocative of, it very effectively emulates this feeling of waking up and not really being able to get a firm grip on what's going on and where, where, where am I, what happened, why am I here right now? What, and it's, it's very effective in that way, and it's a great... It's, it's very much a game of disempowerment. You, you don't know exactly what's going on at first, and you... Like I said, you can't, you can't fight the enemies. And it uses this disempowerment immensely well, and it, it keeps the terror at near unfathomable levels for even for survival horror. I I love this genre, but I've always I am not a big fan of when the 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 average the, the typical 
I don't want to say average, the, the typical survival horror game will arm you and you'll find ammo and, so, and yes there are enemies that are very powerful but you do have guns or the, the, the like. I mean I love Silent Hill. I could I could talk forever about how fantastic those games are but what what this game does that's even better than the you know throwing a lot of really terrifying monsters at you that you then have to fight off is there aren't there aren't an enormous amount of monsters but the n n neither in they, they are few in both you know variety you know, different types and the overall number of, over the course of the game but you can't fight any of them you you are very happy that you are usually you you almost exclusively face like one at a time and it's you you have to hide and hope you don't get seen because if you do get seen they can run at least as fast as you can two strikes and you go down you can't even like defend yourself there's I, I yeah basically just hide and yeah or or run as fast as you can know which way you're going and get to the next area if if, if you do pass a loading door the the monster will not follow and this might seem at first glance like a cop out but they make some fantastic set piece chases from that, from, from those circumstances, yeah, now the if, more, more gothic horror elements, we also have relatively few characters and it's entirely, Daniel as such barely interacts with anyone in the game. You will find numerous Across the game, you'll find these these text things, which will inform you know about the about the universe. It'll provide some exposition, backstory, and the like. And a number of these are written by Daniel himself. He he was keeping a diary at Castle Brandenburg, and basically that. Those, those texts are the only time where you actually have any kind of interaction between people. You playing the game do not meet and interact with people, further, also further heightening the sense of isolation. You are the last, you're the only person left there. The, the enemies, they're not human. They, they, they can appear vaguely human, but they, they are just grotesque looking with, with just deformed faces and bodies. Yeah, I, I won't give, give too much detail about what, what they look like, but they are truly horrifying. And it's very much about the, the mental state of our one protagonist, our sole protagonist. It, it comes across as a video, go, video game form of an Edgar Allan Poe story, very much. And just, yeah, it's, it's highly effective. And, and another style of horror, I've I've already mentioned that the the these monstrous yeah enemies they they do make you think of like something out of Hellraiser like like a Cenobite or something N not feeling like I'm I'm not a crying rip off I'm I'm saying you know there's they they take inspiration from the same sources or similar. By the way, Clive Barger would probably love this game. I don't actually know if he's, like, yeah, he's 
talked about it, but but yeah, it's it's very much. And and in that same vein, we also do have this very macabre, horrifying. You know, you you will find there there's fairly little actual blood and violence in the game, but what there is is that you will find the aftermath of something that just and. Yeah, you'll you'll find dead bodies. You'll find something that clearly used to be used used to be attached to a human being or or some some living being, and it's just it's yeah, it's it's dropped on the floor or splattered on a wall or something, and it's. This is, which, yeah, again, very, very more this, more this sort of visceral, very, yeah, visceral is a good term for it, it's style of horror with a lot of gore and and really, yeah. To, to be fair, there there is some of that in in. Poe as well. Now, I've I've already danced around this a little bit, so let me go straight for one of the unique things about this game is the, in addition to managing your health, you have to manage your sanity. It's it's a it's it's one of the main themes of the game. Is is this real? What is you know an, an hallucination and yeah, basically anything that d disturbs will harm the the sanity of Daniel. Me meaning you know darkness, the aforementioned gore. The, the I, th I think the monsters that you that you sometimes hide from also affect especially if you look directly at them and in addition to you being disturbed by looking directly at them this will also draw their attention to you even if you're hidden and this is a very Realistic, but both aspects are very realistic. I, I suppose I'll start with you know lo looking directly at. You know we, we watch horror movies and once once you've seen a bunch of them you might start you know complaining oh, why is this character so upset by this you know that that vampire doesn't even look as horrifying as you know the vampire in that other movie and they handle it much better. We we get desensitized to it, but. In the real world, and, and that's again, that's also very much something that this does. I don't want to say better, but I love the approach here over the the typical approach of survival horror, where again there are a lot of monsters and a lot of very different ones, and you usually have to kill a ton of them. And here there. Yeah, just the, the mere act of looking at them, because that's that's reality. When you look at something that is just terrifying and that defies your... It, yeah, you, you look at it and you're like, this is not of this world. This is not supposed to be here. You're not looking at a lion or something that's dangerous, but you're like, ah, oh, well, I've read about those. You're looking at... And, at Something that seems to be a human being, but like their face is just horribly disfigured, and yeah, you're looking at it. You you know you can't fight it, and the the, the sure fact that you're looking at it almost in in this game almost definitely means that where you are, it can get to you. You you don't like look at them from afar. So, actually, there are a couple of times where you can be, you, you can see something without, you know, just, just off in the distance or something, but usually it means 
that they can get to you. And with that in mind, it's it's horrifying to you. And the other thing, yeah, when you know, after a while, we we can kind of sense when someone is staring at us, even if we don't. You know, even if we don't, if we can't see them at first. You know, if if you. Yeah, the, the the woods are probably the the best. Like, you know, go to a forest, and you you know you can you can maybe sense if if some animal is staring at you, especially if it's something that might be like a predator. Yeah, maybe, maybe this is less less common today than it was in you know the the dawn of man. But yeah, I th I think you you get what I'm saying, and and clearly also other animals can sense you staring at them, even if you aren't going to hurt them. And, yeah, so, so the, the sanity can, can be increased by avoiding these gory spectacles, by standing in light. And th that is, you know, again, reality. If, if you are really bothered if, if your psyche is very disturbed and you have more light around it, you know, scientifically proven, so yeah. And the, the great thing about this is that this means the, the monsters that you, that you face, if you're standing in light, they can see you, they, they yeah, you, you really stand out. So, albeit you can't, yeah, you, you, you won't be allowed to, like, yeah, yeah, you, you can't actually, you, 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 if, if you are low on sanity, you will have to use light to increase your sanity, but if a monster comes by and you're standing in light, or there is light around you, if, if you happen to leave a lot of light in one area and then a monster comes by, where are you going to hide? There is, there is no spot of darkness left to hide in. And this means that you will have to balance light and darkness with these different you know, forces pulling you in, in different directions, and it's very effective. Literally, losing sanity, you know, you will start to hallucinate. You will suddenly be seeing things that aren't there, including monsters, in, including dead bodies. You, or, or it will distort something that is actually there. There, there are numerous paintings across the, the you know, the, the many walls of Castle Brennenburg, and they're already very, they, I don't know if repelling is the right word, but they, they're not inviting, they, they, they're kind of, they're, they're vast, and they're, they're unwelcoming, they, they're, they're overpowering in how vast they are, you don't want to look at them for very long, and if you're hallucinating, and you look at one of those paintings, they will, yeah, they will be distorted into something grotesque. These these already unpleasant paintings. So that's quite effective. And and in addition, hallucinations. You know, they're, they're both visual and auditory. Other visual hallucinations include this sort of blurring effect, where yeah, you stuff kind of sticks to the the, the screen. If you're if you're walking around a corner. The, the corner will only briefly fade once you, you know, after you've went around the corner. And auditory, you have, you'll literally hear like kids playing, which is very eerie when there clearly aren't actually kids playing around. And, you know, women screaming and these things. And, and there is also this one piercing note that just, plays on and on, that's just really, it's, it's really horrifying to listen to 
when again when when the sanity is that low and the I suppose that about covers the hallucinations. Other signs that, that Daniel is, you know, losing his grip on reality or, or losing his mind is that he his his teeth will grind. Admittedly, the, the sound chosen for that is slightly unfortunate. It doesn't. You you're like that is teeth grinding, isn't it? But but it's a little bit strange. Yeah, and. Daniel will literally mumble out loud about what he's seeing as, as a clear sign of his loss of self-control. It's, it's very effective and of course what all these, uh, I've already described numerous ways the game or, you know, already shows in the characters that something they're seeing is, you know, that yeah, that you can tell that Daniel is being terrified by what, by what he's seeing. Again, something that isn't... is at least not prevalent in, in survival horror, and that again is somewhere... The, the protagonist is the... often the, the sort of proxy for the audience. So when they are terrified, we are terrified, and when they're just gunning down monsters without really thinking too much, you know, they, they'll just say, well, we know that things like that don't exist. <laughs> Th thank you, Harry Mason. That's, that's great. <laughs> actually, that might actually be the, well, that might be Kaufman. Never mind. I gotta play the Sound Hill 1 again. Anyway, the, the basic, yeah, in this, it's very clearly destroying Daniel psychologically and because of that we the audience we we the audience you the player that that's one thing the way to play this game is by yourself in the dark with headphones thank me later and again if this does not sound appealing to you then this game is probably just not for you this is for the people who approach horror as I want to be terrified. Scare the ever-loving crap out of me. Give me nightmares, give me sleepless nights. I don't want to see, you know, a ton of different monsters. I don't want to gun down a ton of different monsters. Just terrify me with effective if at, at times simple, you know, tools. So, so yes, the, 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 you, the player, do not want to see Daniel losing his mind like that because not only does it, like, like I said, the, the blurring effect, for example, make it more difficult to, to play and, and at times, literally, like, Daniel will start to faint if you don't take good care of his sanity. So, yeah, you, you'll very much want to deal with that. And that's... Yeah, that's... that's uh, it, it bleeds over to the, the, the player. It, it makes the player feel more terrified. Not because we're told to be terrified, but because the character that we are playing as is terrified. It's 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 a show don't tell, you you might say. It's it's very much a game with, with very little I mean I, I mentioned the notes and they, they will have exposition, but other you know I don't know, it just it doesn't feel like you're being told a story. It feels like you are discovering a story. You you are piecing it together yourself. The, the game won't tell you how the different things go together. The, the, the only thing the game will directly tell you from, from you finding notes and such is to... There is a, a page in, in your inventory, in your notebook, of mementos, which basically... It's, it's essentially objectives and, and telling you, you know, 
just bullet points, you know, if you collect four items of this particular sort, you should be able to create this sort of thing or you know, some, something like that. It doesn't tell you specifically, and it's not that you, you don't go to a character and you're told if you do this then that, and it, it, you, you piece it together yourself, and yes. Now, yes, the, the sanity, the, like I said, it's very much about light and the light sources in the game. I already mentioned that some of the torches are already lit. You, you can, of course, stand by torches, but many of these torches are not lit. So, you, you find these, I think they're called tinder boxes. They're essentially like, yeah, it's, it's match, match boxes. And you can find many of these, and each of these tinder boxes is, you know, one use per, and they will light, for example, a torch or a, a candelabra. I think, yeah, there are even fireplaces which you can start a fire in if, if, if they have firewood in them. And there you go, that's, that's a light source. But this is a static light source, and you, you have to be thinking, how much time am I going to be spending in this area? Is it worth using tinderboxes here? And it's a permanent light source. You can't turn it off again. If you if if a monster comes by, and thus you you know if if there are like a couple of light sources in a basic area, you might want to leave just a few of them unlit in case a monster comes by, and then remember where there is no light, rush there, hide, and yeah. It's actually briefly more on hiding. It is very, very effective to hide. You can literally... I mean, they, they are... The, the, the enemies will... You know, when they're looking for you, they're either kind of patrolling, you know, typical stealth game style, or they are outright searching for you, which is basically if they spotted you at some point, but then you got away from... Like, if you, if you closed a door, that will slow them down. Just they'll tear it down, but you've bought yourself a few seconds, you know. And you and you can block the the door as well. You know, throw debris in front of it. You know that that'll again just slow them down a little bit. But once you know, if if you are hiding, they they won't necessarily look in every single nook and cranny. So I've I've already reviewed a game which in which you could hide from enemies. That was Silent Hill Shattered Memories. In that game, it seemed to serve no, no purpose. It did not seem to, again, a, a game where you also could not kill enemies. You know, you, you, you ran or you hid. And in that game, hiding does not seem to serve any purpose because they keep looking until they find you and it's not timed. You don't have to just avoid the enemies for so and so long. You have to get from point A to point B. So, but in this game they actually do it brilliantly. They, they literally, you can hide and the enemy won't just stand around forever. After a while, he will go back away. And I literally, there was a point in this game where I was crouched in a dark corner, keeping an eye on my sanity. I knew that if I stay here, I you know eventually Daniel will lose his mind, which by the way also makes you more obvious to the enemies. So yeah, and probably it, again makes sense if if you can't control your yourself, you know you can't you can't remain perfectly still, and someone else could sense that, hey, there's something moving there in the darkness. Literally crouched in the darkness, knowing that there was one of these monsters just one foot to my right. You know, to my left is this wall, behind me, a, a locked gate. 
ahead of me a hallway and I'm like if I just stay here for a little bit longer, I'm, I'm of course afraid to look at the monster because I know that will, you know, further damage my sanity, further and, and increase my chances of being spotted by it. And I'm like, if I just stay here for just a little bit longer, maybe he will lose interest. Maybe he won't find me and, and then I can light, I get some light going you know, decrease, the, or increase my sanity, rather. Yeah, it's, it's incredibly effective, and it, again, if that sounds at all appealing to you, this, this is your game. And the other source of light is the, I, I should mention, tinder boxes are pretty common in this game. You will find a lot of them. Now, the other source of light is the lantern, which consumes oil. And this, you know, again, very realistically so. And you will find more oil, which you have to manually load into the lantern, but it's a lot, it's a lot more rare. And yes, yeah, so you have you know, the, the lantern is not static, and you can turn it off and on whenever you want. So if you're using that, and then a monster comes by, you just turn it off, and then you have darkness again. You, you have to figure out which of these you will use. You know, you, you can't rely solely on one of them. There aren't torches everywhere or candelabra. Sometimes you will be in rooms where there is nothing to light, but at the same time, if you rely purely on the lantern, you will run out of oil. And yeah, so it's 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 they they really thought that through. Now, with the sanity talked about, I will briefly go into health as well. Basically, you don't, you know, if, if, if an enemy damages your health, you, he can hit you maybe twice and then you're dead. You know, not, not like by the first, no, by the second strike, you're dead. And considering what these monsters are attacking with, I, I won't directly, I won't give away what it is, but it, it makes sense that they can kill you quite quickly. And th th that is the, th that's by the way the, the closest thing you ever get to anything resembling a HUD in this game is when they strike, when, when you take damage, you will see like, you know, a, a bloody brief wound that then fades away. You know, it's typical, you, you've seen them in others, but yeah. Uh, on the screen. Other than that, you have these the 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 little indicator cursor at, at the center of the screen, which really just you know that way you know what you're you know where you're pointing. If it hasn't changed into something, you know it'll change if it's something you can pick up, or you know if if it's something you can just interact with. I do wish that the icons for this you can interact with, and this you will, you know, be lifting, were more different from each other. I can, you know, looking very closely, I can see there's a difference, but when, I, when I'm hurrying, I can't tell there's a difference. It's, that's a little unfortunate. Yeah, you, you don't necessarily want to be picking something up if you're trying to interact with, uh, yeah. Now, with the sanity and the health, this is sadly where I have to admit the. This is one of the only negative aspects of the game. You do kind of have to play along with the game. You do kind of have to believe the the reality that the game creates. That death is death, for example, and that losing the sanity will literally, you know, but quick interjection, another way to increase sanity is to make progress. So, yeah. 
and you know the, there you could make the argument either way you know of course it you know increases sanity because you you know you got some hope back you are getting there you know, you're maybe understanding more of what's going on but then on the other hand why is it increasing your sanity because you're also delving deeper into this horrifying truth and thus it seems yeah in part I wish that actually I, I will go into that in a little bit but yes the, the if you don't play along with the game you might say if if you just if you if you're a gamer, if you're just playing something to beat it, which the game literally specifically says, you know, to, to try to just take the mood in and take it as an experience, don't try to beat the game. This is not, you know, it's, it's, it's the least video game-like video game that I've played in a while. It really does not at all remind you that it's a, a video game. I'm, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm enjoying the more video games like video games also, but it just, you know, I, I play a couple of different games usually daily, and what I notice is when I'm playing Amnesia, it's very much, oh right, there's not something that I have to gather to, you know, I'm, I'm playing Match Pain 3, you know, gotta search for the golden guns, the clues. Multiplayer, you know, gotta focus on using, you know, there, there are achievements and such, is what I'm saying. This game, it, it just doesn't, it, it genuinely feels like a story, a an, an experience, the a, a slice of reality. And so, so yes, the yeah, if, if you don't play along, then the game, basically the, the sanity and, and health and stuff is more effective in creating a mood than it is in necessarily provoking a certain response in the player. I, I won't give away exactly why in this video, I might talk about it in the spoiler video, but it's something I have to mention, it's sadly, it's one of the few, you know, less, it's one of the only criticisms of this game at all, and it's, it's and it is not dependent on whether you, whether this is a game for you or not. It is something that just, sadly, but that, well, if, if you do play along, if you do get into the game, this really, really rewards it. And I'll get into that some more, but here's where I f how I feel they could have addressed this more. The game really does not particularly have replayability because it doesn't have settings. There, there are no difficulty settings. There, you, you don't get a rating at the end of the game as you, for example, do in other survival horror games. I suppose I shouldn't mention them with spoilers, I guess. It, it really is, it is an experience and the, the game, it took me about nine and a half hours to complete the, the regular game and yes, like, like I said, there, there, you know, if it had had like different settings as, I don't recall which of the Silent Hill games, but I think at least one of them had like settings where you could say, you know, give me easy puzzles or give me hard puzzles, give me easy enemies or hard enemies. If the, if, if health and sanity were, yeah, yeah, had these, had settings in this where you could say, you know, make it have more consequence than it it does in this game it yeah that that would be a fantastic thing it it does have a couple of different endings but at the same time it's not something where you have to 
again, comparing it to other survival horror, in this one, you don't, it's, it's not that you have to play the entire game over, you know, more than once to get these different endings. You can just load and, and do it over, do it, do it in a different way. It's not, uh, yeah. Now, the, about the length and playability, Yes, I suppose with with length, I already mentioned the the main game took me nine and a half hours. The I, I believe these are free. They they at least I bought this over Steam. I don't I'm I'm not certain if it's a specific version or if it's just but that certainly came with downloadable content in the form of a highly informative commentary track, the chapter, I suppose you could say, called Justine, which took me one, you know, it'll take you one or two hours to complete. It took me two hours because, well, I figured out that I wasn't, that there was something I wasn't doing entirely right the, the first time, but anyway. Yes, the, the, and, and the five short stories, the, the collection of five short stories entitled Remember, which, of, which are written by Mikael Hilbert, oh yeah, getting all Scandinavian on you guys, it's a Swedish company, I'm Danish, I, anyway, yeah, the, the writer for Fractional Games of the story, of the, the game, so obviously it, it very much ties into the, the game itself. Now, what I find great about Justine and Remember is that these do enhance the main game by, by further furnishing the universe, you might say, by, by adding more depth to the universe, yet without at any point spoiling anything. The you can play Justine, Amnesia: The Dark Descent, and read the five short stories in any order, and none of them will spoil any of the others. And that's fantastic. That's a really, really great. It yeah, it it genuinely is just a. It's there. There are different pieces of an overall picture, and uh, yes, the, the briefly about Justine, it is a separate story from Amnesia using the same, the same style, and it's, you, you will find notes there in, in Justine which inform about the story of Amnesia the Dark Descent, and basically Justine is a, a portal-esque series of puzzles where you will be tested your your character will be tested let's let's go with that yes and it's like i said it's it's quite short there is no saving in that and death is permanent as as they right it's it's if you die in justine it'll you know go back to the desktop and I've, I've seen you know other people online say it's probably it's probably a bug but you know the the sarcastic retort of the developers is death is permanent you know it's, yeah it's, it's definitely you don't need save feature in that it's a save feature in that because of the the short length of it and because and I won't give it I won't give away why, but it does. It is worth playing through more than once. There, there are some that does have different. Yeah, you you can go through it more than once and see different things. And I will leave it at that. Now, with all that said, 
So yes, this is this is all that you'll get if you get the game. So just as a as a as as far as length, as far as how many hours of enjoyment you'll get out of it. By the way, I should say the short stories are great. They they do very much for this. You know, I guess maybe not exactly Edgar Allan Poe, but but yeah, good horror short stories. So yeah, and. Yeah, so so th this is this is the amount of content you will get just by getting a copy of this game, which I do very much recommend. I want to make that absolutely clear. the The way that the game can, you know, in in increase in you know how long you will keep playing it and such is that it is quite welcoming of modding content. And it's it's a fantastic engine. It's I've seen some very different styles of of mods. I, I there there are yeah. I, I don't want to give exactly away, but just if if you're interested in this game and you want to look at the just you know search for amnesia mods and yeah, it's. There's definitely, they've provided an engine that can really give some fantastic content. And, and this, and, and yes, the, the, the mods in the community is where this, I've also read about that, you know, fan, fanfic is almost a dirty word. <laughs> because of well the internet and and people this this game has very devoted fans and thus you know people who will write stories to again expand the universe and that is how the the yeah that's where a lot of the enjoyment comes from this is this is not a a sort of franchise thing this is not as as marketable as a lot of other you know even survival horror, oh, even as a lot of other survival horror, and it's not. It it doesn't have quite the wide the, the mainstream appeal, and like I said, it doesn't really have a lot of replayability in and of itself. But they they've created something great that, uh, yeah, I've basically covered that. Now, the. Basically, I suppose I should, the, the physical, the, the physics of the engine is, is really the, one, one of the, the fantastic things, and, and like I mentioned, this is very much the, yeah, Penumbra 2.0, and that game already, you know, great physics, and this improves some upon that. It's, it's especially an improvement as far as graphics go. This has great graphics. I've, I would personally say that those of Penumbra were good for the time. Yeah, the, these, these are great. And the, the visual effects... The, as far as I understand, there, there, a lot of them are particle effects. Yeah, really, really impressive. It, the, the game really feels real, you know. And the, the, now there are, you know, note that it is an independent game, and there, there are some aspects where you can tell that they don't, they don't have the budget of a bigger. Which at the same time they they also because they they aren't expected to you know necessarily satisfy the mainstream they can also take chances and hence we get these highly interesting unique features basically the the game you can pick up nearly anything that you would realistically. Be able to pick up like like I said, there are parts where like you know part of the ceiling, for example, has collapsed, 
or of one of the hallways you know, collapse and you, you, you might, you know, you won't be able to pass, but maybe there, some of the smaller debris you might be able to pick up, maybe even throw away, or maybe, maybe there's a large, large rock. You won't be able to throw that. You won't even be able to pick it up, but you can grab it and pull it away, you know, or shove it away, whether you, everything has weight. Everything that you can interact with has weight in this game. When you, like I mentioned, you know, point-and-click adventure, and the reason that this works where more recent point-and-click adventures have really failed, it's, it's typically the point-and-click adventure mostly died out with the prevalence in gaming of 3D, because it's just not as you know, once you have 3D, you maybe want other things than just point and click. Point and click works great for 2D. Now, what I've, I've seen in, in the various point and click adventures since 3D is, well, okay, we'll give them 3D. But what makes these, the, the frictional games, point and click adventures work, is that you also have this these, these realistic physics where you can literally interact with, you know, if, if, if you have to get, you know, up somewhere, well, maybe the solution is you grab a bunch of boxes and you stack them on top of each other, balancing them, because, you know, the, the law of gravity, if, if you don't, yeah, if, if you don't properly balance them, they might just fall and yeah you might get really really sick of Jenga by the end of playing this game but yeah and it like I've already mentioned this sense of reality heightens the the, the the terror and many of the puzzles are based on these realistic physics so like I mentioned you can move debris Let's say you have to get through a door. It opens towards you, but there are, you know, various d d pieces of debris in front of it. You have to move them one by one, and it's, you know, you don't just click on it. No, you hold down the mouse button, and you, you know, either physically move the character, you know, Daniel, away, or you turn the, you know, the or you turn him with by, by moving the mouse, depending on how heavy the item is and where you're getting it to. Which also, you know, you can't, let's say you, yeah, let's say you're dragging the big rock. If there's something directly behind you so you can't back up, then obviously you can't drag it backwards. Maybe you have to turn around, move the thing behind you, or maybe you have to drag it another way. It's always very intuitive. You, you aren't, like I said, you, you don't, you, you're not spending any time or effort trying to adjust to the, the rules of this world. You are applying real world rules. There's literally, there, there, are, there are labs and you do a little a chemistry in this game and it's, yeah, I mean, it, it feels real. You, you just think, oh, right, like, you know, and, and I'm not, you don't need, like, a lot of special knowledge to play this game. This is, you know, stuff you'll typically learn in school. And, you know, if you, if you haven't gone through, like, you know, eight or nine years of school, you probably shouldn't be playing this game. It, it really, it, it's not for the faint of heart, and it's not for children at all. But, but yeah, it, this, this interaction, every adventure game needs, like, red herrings, needs something that you, that you think, oh, maybe this is the solution, and it turns out not to be, and th what that will be in this game is, well, you know, you can pick up almost everything, so maybe you think you need to stack boxes when you don't, for example. Maybe you think you have to move items when it isn't actually the, the case. It's 
always very, yeah, yeah, you're, you're approaching it very much like you would in the real world. There are, of course, also the more traditional puzzles where you have to find keys or items, you have an inventory, you don't have a HUD, but you do have an inventory, which is also where your sanity and health meters are, as well as the meter for how much oil is in the lamp, the lantern. And that's also where you access, you know, your notes, every, every note and diary and, and the mementos, the objectives are all stored until, you know, well, the objectives of course disappear once you've solved them, but you can, you know, at the end of the game, you can go back and read the very first message you got in the game, and that, again, with the story being told a lot through these notes, you can, you know, many of which are dated, you can go back and compare, oh, when he was saying this, he was talking about that thing. So when I put the two together, now I get it. You know, it's, nobody sits down and talks you through what has gone on or anything. It is you piecing it together. The game, there is some, you might say the, the overall progression is linear, but the game avoids ever actually feeling linear by, after, like I said, you, you start by waking up and the first area is quite linear. The, the you know, the developers explain the, you know, you, you should just be getting used to the, the interface, the various, you know, just controls. In case it's the first time you play a game from first person, perspective, you know, it, yeah, it's WSAD usually, and then you can lean left or right with Q and E, and the mouse interacts, and uh, yeah, you know, F turns the lantern on and off. But yeah, if it's the first game you play, then you get a little bit of time to get used to that. And after that, you get, th th there are a number of hub levels where yeah, you, you have a bunch of different doors, and you will, you know, you, you'll be able to tell where the ultimate goal is, and, it, you know, by, by approaching that, you will be, you know, maybe there's some kind of obstacle, maybe machinery is broken that you have to fix, maybe there's something you have to remove in order to proceed, and then you start going to the, the various other rooms, and, and you know, you're thinking, well, how do I solve this? Well, I have to get this before I can proceed. And you're, you know, you're following the signs, which are all in Latin, by the way. They, they're translated into English by pointing at them, but it makes sense for them to be in Latin. I won't go exactly why, but yeah, you. Yeah, you're, you're piecing together, oh, right, well, I guess that would be in here, and thus you, you know, you're not being led by the hand, you're not being directed where to go, you, you get a goal, and then you, yourself, the player, figures out, how do I solve this goal? It's something that you really don't, I'm not, I'm not going to rant about modern gaming, but I see it far too little in most in, in, in a lot of new games, and I applaud Frictional Games for bringing that back, because that is the way to play games. That's, that's, you want to be made to, to apply yourself, to think some. Now, the, like I said, the, the interface is quite intuitive, and in addition to that, you do get some early instructions on how to approach. I, I, I do wonder slightly why they, they seem to have forgotten to include the instruction that when you interact with things, scrolling on the mouse wheel, yes, that's, that's what that was, brings the item closer to Daniel or further away. I actually, I sort of discovered it by accident at one point playing this, and then I remember, oh right, that was in Penumbra too. 
yeah, they, they might have forgotten to, to include it in this. In Penumbra, I was directed to, to do it, but yeah, in-game instructions. I haven't looked at any manual of the like, but the it's, it's, it's a very easy game to get into. You don't have to learn a bunch of different things. You're just you're walking around from first person perspective, interacting with items, and figuring out where to go from clues and piecing together the story also from these hints and clues. It's it's also one of these games that to an extent the amount of you know, how, how much you get out of it is how much you put into it, as I also said about, I believe, Deus Ex Human Revolution. If you want to get into the story, well, less so than Deus Ex Human Revolution, depending on how much you want to get into the story is, yeah, how much you piece together what's really going on. And depending on, yeah, how, how much you want to take in the... the you know, the atmosphere and such, is how much you get out of that. It's, if, if you just want to be solving the puzzles, you can do that. You know, the game doesn't really, you know, s slow you down or force you ahead or, or the like. I should perhaps say the, the various enemy encounters, as far as I understand, are scripted as, as not as how exactly they will turn out, but where the enemy will appear and when, you know, what, what circumstances. And then you, the player, you know, either you hide or you, yeah, run or, or the like. But the game very much feels like they could show up at any time. It's, it's, it's very effective. They, it, it doesn't... There's no point in this game where you feel safe. I love that. I there's no point where you know again survival horror. Typically, you know, well with this gun, I get, there's nothing like that in this game. You're always worried that a monster will appear or that there will be some kind of horrible yeah. And. The, the great thing is they managed to do this without the game feeling like you are doing poorly, without frustrating the player, because you don't feel like you're bad at the game because you can't necessarily deal with the enemies. It's, it's just, it's, it's reality, and you know, whether you've played it for a few minutes or several hours, you don't feel any more prepared for the next encounter with an enemy. And I should also say, you know, I've mentioned that you're, you shouldn't look directly at them if you can avoid it and, you know, you have to hide from them. When an enemy appears, the score will let you know. There is this thunderous score, just booming, and then you hear the approaching footsteps and that gives you you know this this happens a lot usually it happens before the enemy sees you that you you'll hear that an enemy is nearby and that gives you some time to get your bearings figure out where can I hide and then if the enemy sees you this again, the score will let you know. The, there is a distinct shift in the score. And as you're running away, again, first person perspective, you can hear that they're chasing you. Again, very, very much from the score. And without like turning around and looking back at the enemy, you can tell they're, they're right behind me and you know, get over to a door. Hopefully you already know if this door is, you know, pull open or, you know, yeah, open that way so you don't have to waste any time trying to figure that out, get behind the door, close the door behind you, you've bought yourself a few seconds, you know, again, get your bearings, trying to get, uh, yeah. That's also something that, again, I, I love about this game and 
that is carried over from Penumbra. This game, the, the difficulty with which you find your way is based entirely on the player himself. If you have a great sense of direction, then the game won't be difficult to you know, find your way around. But if you have a terrible sense of direction in video games, you'll have trouble finding your way around. If, if you would like a map of some of the areas of the game, there is one point where you find maps that you can briefly study, but you can't like, you know, bring them with you. They're, they're static. They're there. If you want more, well, get a pad and, you know, pad of paper, pen. That's, you know, that, that's something you, you can do, but other than that, yeah, it, it is just like, you know, storing it in, in memory, and yeah, I, I, I love this. I, 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 I love the solution in Silent Hill as well, but again, that's somewhat more... Yeah, I just, I, I love the, the, the I, f I find that this approach terrifies me more. I, I never know quite entirely where to, to go and this whole, yeah, it's, it's, it's super effective. Now, the, there are some great contrasts in, in the game. I, I quite recently reviewed Max Payne 3, and I am aware that I am, I may be in the minority because I did not care much for the single player of that game. I can appreciate that it is trying to be very, you know, pu pushing the player constantly and trying to be very intense, but as I mentioned in the review of that, it never gives you any breathing room, which by comparison to game like, you know, games like Kane Lynch 1 and 2, do, which are also games that push the player, and this game, for as terrifying, as dark, and as overpowering as as it can be, the, the score and the and and this running away from a monstrous enemy, which runs as fast as you do, and the only thing you can hope to do is you know get get through a door, close the door behind you to buy yourself a few seconds, something like that. It, this is, as, as overpowering as that gets, the game also does, again, without making, without letting you feel safe, you do get a sort of, yeah, you, you can, you can, you, you will find areas that are then also very, much brighter. Without being, you know, bright in the in the more eerie sense, you know, but not not as and, and for as claustrophobic as the game gets, there are also areas that are quite open and 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 again without losing the terror. I, these guys know horror. They are fantastic at it. And the. I, I should say, in, in all fairness, the game was, you know, through, throughout development, changed back and forth a lot. And I don't personally feel that you can tell all that much from the end product. It's... I, I you know, listening to the commentary, I could tell, oh, right, I can sort of see that, but if it hadn't been pointed out to me by them, I probably wouldn't have been able to tell. I, I, I didn't notice very much of it on, on my own, at least, but yeah. Now, th there are numerous different fears that this plays on again, like, you know, Penumbra. I will say Penumbra played on more of them. I, yes, make of that what you will. 
the, the fears here are you know, the f fear of being eaten, as, as already mentioned, the fear of a cave-in, the fear of being killed by something unseen. I'm not going to give away what that means, but I will say this has one of the best monsters I have ever faced in a video game. And I will leave it at that. Now, the the acting is somewhat average. It's these these notes, but this wisely makes uses much more voice acting than Penumbra did. In Penumbra, you read almost everything yourself. In this, there is still reading. You know, I'm, I'm not bagging on reading, I'm just saying it is a video game. You do have the medium of sound at your disposal. It's, it's, it's good to have it read aloud. Diary excerpts of Daniels are read aloud. And, you know, some, but, but yeah, other notes might just be, you know, for, for you to read by yourself. It's actually probably a really good idea that they do some of both also, so you, you never get tired of either, really. It's, it's a game that knows how much it should give of pretty much everything. It's, it's not too short, it's not too long, there's not too much voice acting, there's not too little voice acting. Yeah, it just, it, it never really, and, and the, the, the amount of enemies are just, you know, the, the, I already mentioned that there aren't that many enemies, and I mentioned that you never feel prepared for the enemies, the two are somewhat connected, you know, it's, it, again, once you've played a few hours of a typical, survival horror game, you've encountered d different enemies. You may have picked up two or three uh, guns, and you're like, okay, so this enemy should, you know, I should give them, you know, maybe five sh rounds from the gun. Or if they get close, I pull up the shotgun, and you're like, you're, you're planning out, you're, you're, you have contingency plans. You know how to deal with what you face, because it's common, and because you can deal with it. Here, they're uncommon enough that you you never get used to them no matter how much you say, or at least not in in a single playthrough anyway you know you you just they they never feel like they're completely gone but and and when they show up they they terrify now the I yes, I, I suppose the I should mention more about the I I guess the the the, the physics engine should should there should be a, I should mention a little bit more as you know already mentioned like you know if you're opening a door away from you you move the mouse up as you're holding down the mouse button you know you grab the door and move it which also allows stealth if if there's an enemy nearby and you're trying to hide you can grab the door open it just a little bit and peek through and tell if the enemy is is still nearby and, you know, and if you're opening it up, you know, opening it towards you, you, you know, grab it with the mouse, pull it up. It's, it's very effective in making you feel like you're here, you're, you're, this is, you know, this is the real world and you're just, yeah. And I, I hate to admit it, but I think the PC might actually be better than the Wii at this sort of thing, because the mouse just does have this level of sensitivity and the kind of... and it's easier to use for the player. It might also, in part of me, just briefly, on the PC, I'm always seated. You know, the mouse is just right there, it's, it's resting on something and I just move it with the hands. When I play the Wii, I'm standing up, 
and I, you know, usually holding out the, the Wii mode. This, it, it just does get more straining in the long run, and when, you know, already holding out your arm like this, not just the, this or, you know, come for me, like, holding out your arm is already, I'm going to sound like such a weenie, you know, if, if there are any, you know, gym, yeah. I'm not in as bad shape as I sound, I swear, but it, this is already somewhat of an exercise, you're already using your muscles some, and then if you have to be like, you know, turning a knob or, um, or just, you know, it just, it doesn't feel as much like reality, it's, it's a little too difficult and you have a harder time adjusting to that sensitivity, I find. I've played a lot of you know, both PC and, and Wii, and I do still find that, yeah, so I hope Frictional Games continue with this, because I really want to see what else they can come up with, with, with applying this excellent physics engine to just terrify us players. And the, there are, there are a few awkward features perhaps to the, 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 the physics, the, like I mentioned, you, you can scroll the mouse to bring items further away. If you, you know, when, when you just have, it's, Daniel's got long arms, long arms like a government, seriously, he can really hold out an item for, yeah, and, which, again, carryover from Penumbra, and if you hold down the R button, to, um, if you've picked something up and you're holding down the R button, which is already slightly awkward, I wish they would move it to the mouse, I don't know, maybe there's a lot of trouble with that, but uh, yes. You, you can, uh, you can, what's it called? You can move it on the both Z and X axes. And already there we do have a little bit of, I wish that it, that you could choose just one of the two axes because once I've aligned something correctly by one of these axes, I would prefer that that one be locked in place so I can focus on the other axis. And yeah, it's, sometimes it just it's it's more difficult than it feels like it should be for for this. You can also use right mouse. Uh, key button to, to to sort of you know push something away it's it's good for like throwing something or if you've just you know gone through a door which opens into the area and it's wide open you can slam that door shut you know obviously much faster which also I should mention you know the, the faster you move the mouse the more force you will apply and sometimes this is literally necessary. Some, sometimes you need to, you know, really, sometimes you, you'll move more carefully or sometimes you can't move very fast or sometimes you need to move really like, you know, throw something against something else or the like. Now, I think the right, right mouse button is also supposed to be used to quickly open things, but this this is kind of awkward to get working and not very... I, you can't completely depend on it. So I, I hope that they can maybe do something about that for the next game that Frictional Games hopefully does with this kind of fantastic physics engine. I, there, I, I, I'm not sure I've really talked enough about the immersion of the game. It really does just, yeah, you, you feel like you're there. Everything around you feels real and you can, you can pick up almost everything around you that you could realistically carry and it might not do any good, but, but it might. And it, just the fact that you can do it makes you feel like like this is the real world and, and sometimes in fact there are things that where you can interact and you might not 
you might regret interacting with someone. Like, like I mentioned that the health deteriorates very quickly from being struck by enemies. There are also things that you can interact with that just take a little bit of health. Like, and, and a lot of these are obvious. Like, if you see a fighter in front of you and, you know, pointing the, the cursor at it gives, you know, the, the hand interact, you know, you can maybe tell that, okay, touching that is gonna hurt, but you can do it. You know, it's, it's a, yeah, and the, you know, and sometimes you can actually use this to find out what is, is, is what I have in front of me dangerous or, you know, what, what qualities does it have? Well, okay, I will touch it because survival horror protagonists, they're not that bright. Now, I suppose... I, sh I should also mention the, the enemy encounters, they don't tend to feel unfair in spite of these enemies, you know, typically having the upper hand. It's, you know, you, yeah, I, I, again, they just, they, they do a really, really good job. You know, you, you can hide. And the, the hiding is really, you barely even get any instructions for that, but it's again just, well, if I'm in darkness, if I'm crouched, and maybe if I'm behind some objects, then he won't be able to see me, you know, and I, I suppose the only thing that you could really, you know, and, and yeah, you, you figure it out. The things that the game doesn't tell you, you can usually just try something and you'll find out. Now, I think that might just about... I, I, I suppose I should talk some more about the... I, I, I definitely, I, I want to sort of compare and contrast the, the supernatural events and the, the way the game has you feeling like it, it's, it's, it's spreading, it's, it's not just, uh, yeah, it's not just once or twice. I, I want to compare and contrast that to the other world of Silent Hill, and this is not to the... Not to reflect badly on either, but where Silent Hill's other world is sort of a a nightmare that you that that you know takes over part of reality, or that kind of yeah that 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 changes some things into a horrific version. You know, you, you have the, the, the rusted metal, you know, that, that suddenly replaces streets, for example. This doesn't have the, the, the out of, of the other world, where the other world will retract at, at some point. In this, this the, the supernatural, it's, first and foremost, you start out and it's the real world. It is, you know, when, when you are in Silent Hill, any of the games, certainly that I've played, there is something going on. It's, it's not completely reality. But in this game, it's basically reality. You know, I, like, I, I mean, I mentioned that the, this, this castle is abandoned, but it really is abandoned. It's, there, there is a significant sense of it, it being abandoned, and you'll find out why it's abandoned. It's, there, there is a genuine explanation. That where Silent Hill is sort of this little hole in our world, this, this portal to a, another dimension, and it, well, so two dimensions if you count Silent Hill and the other world version of Silent Hill is two separate ones. This is basically the, the, something supernatural is taking over at least Castle Brennenberg, and there, there isn't really. Yeah, I, I think I've pretty much said so. Make of that what you will. And I 
do want to mention some more. I one more aspect of the storytelling. I've already mentioned these notes that you find, and that everything is from Daniel's perspective. Daniel's memory was erased after he got to the castle Brandenburg, but not immediately after. And I'll, I'll leave it at that. So, as you move through the castle, you might have flashbacks that reveal something that... Yes, and, and basically, all of these are in-engine. You don't lose... You, you typically don't even lose control over Daniel while they go on. Basically, you have voiceover. It's it's very clear from the you know the, the effects applied to the sound that this is not something that's being said right now. There there is a red tint, and it 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 very much has this effect of being a recollection. It's it's. Again, it, it delves into Daniel's psyche, and yeah, these these are again a, a great way to further you know find out about what's going on, get maybe hints as to where you're going or how you're going to get there, various things, and it's it's again just you you know how how much you want to delve into that. Now, the, the overall story and s such, I, I, I read other reviews that said that you know, the story is average and, and that the ending could be better. I don't think I really see it. I've, I really tried, but I, I found the story to be highly engaging. And I, I don't know. I suppose it's not it's not strictly the most original, but it at the same time doesn't really remind me of any stories of recent years. And the ending, I've, I've already mentioned, there's more than one. I found them to be a an excellent sort of an, another example of where the game is great at set up and pay off. There is, there's nothing about the, the, the endings that feels like... Everything's wrapped up by, by the endings. It is, it is a full story. You, you, can, you can continue to theorize about, you know, what, what exactly, you know... It, it's, it doesn't... Like, like I said, this is not a game that explains things away. This is a game that provides hints and you yourself, and this is again why it's such effective horror, you, you add to that. Your imagination fills in the blanks. You, you are a, a man with, with no memory who, who, you know, parts of his memory begin to come back as you, you make your way through the castle, but at the end of the day, you don't know everything, and you shouldn't. You, you, you think about it, and you add to it, and there are, there are you know, you, you can debate with, with fellow fans what really happened, and was this, yeah. I thought that they were really, really good, and I'm, I'm ecstatic to have a new game that has a beginning, middle, and end, that has a story that actually it's actually a story. It's not just a, a part of you know, an overall story that might never be completed. I'm looking at you, Assassin's Creed, fear, and... I, I, yeah, I feel like if, yeah, if, if you're into Edgar Allan Poe, H.P. Lovecraft, Clive Barker, you're, you're gonna love this. You know, story and, and universe, it, it, establishes and develops an atmosphere from just from start to finish you are enveloped in the world of amnesia and it is one of the best 
at, at just at, at dealing with atmosphere. It's, it's such a rich, full atmosphere. You, you don't feel like anything was just, you know, yeah, was, was, was only done part of the way. I realized brief, briefly to expand upon, I mentioned earlier that the acting is, is you know, average. It's, it's when, when you hear these, you know, these diary excerpts read aloud and such, it's, it's just, it's slightly overdone. Like, if, if someone is, you know, angry, they're like, you know, oh, I hate this guy. And, you know, if, if they're sad, it's like, I can't believe this. It's, it's, just, it's, it's very melodramatic. And n n note that it might actually go back and forth between these moods in the same excerpt. And that in itself is not a bad thing, but the acting is a tad too, too much. I, I will say that the writing is, quite, is really, really good. Now, the saving and, and such, I believe, is the only thing left. So, basically the game... Again, the, the, when you start the game, when, when you first boot it up, it tells you, don't worry about saving, you know, we, we, let us take care of that for you. And really, there, there is an autosave function, and you, the player, can also save any time. But the way the save feature is set up is that to save, you also have to go back out of the game you're currently playing. You know, you, you can restore it immediately, but what this encourages is that you you don't just save every few minutes. And <laughs> yeah, I I am horrible at that. I am just the the I, I save a lot when I'm allowed to and this was a game where I really did not do that. It's yeah, it it, it really just it tells you, you know, you, you, no matter when you stop playing, you can always save right there. So it's not like, you know, not a huge complaint, but just briefly to compare to, for example, some of the Silent Hill games, there you, you maybe, you know, have more checkpoint saving, and if you get to a save point, even if you could play a little longer, you know, I, I will sometimes say, well, I should probably stop for now, just to get, you know. And in this game, it's again just you, you... Whether you play for just hours on end, or you just take it... Well, you know, you probably shouldn't play for just a few minutes. That really won't mean much to, you know, it's, it's atmosphere. Let it, let it soak it in, you know. But whether you do play for like one hour or three hours, once you've played as much as you feel like you're going to, press escape, save and exit, and that's it. You know, you're out of the game in a few minutes, and you know, a few seconds, and that's it. The next time you boot it back up, you can return to exactly where you left it off. And with you not saving every so often and then loading, Again, you, you forget that you're playing a game, and that is the note I will end this review on. This is, that is one of the incredible feats that this game accomplishes. You forget that you're playing a video game. It, you, you, you have to sort of, it's, it's, it's like a dream. What you, you wake up afterwards and you're like, that didn't really happen, did it? I, that couldn't have happened. That, it, it just... But man, did it feel like it did happen. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.